Hello everybody, Coach Robert here. And so this last weekend we had another of our PHCC tournaments on Chess Kid and wanted to go over one of the top games. Again, we've been doing a series uh, after every tournament, I pick one of the top games. This was a tough choice this week. We had Eowyn PHCC finish in first place, winning all four of her games. Uh, in second place, tied with the exact same score, exact same tie breaks, were Red Honest Orc and Daniel PHCC. Both of these two kids only lost to Eowyn PHCC, so I had to pick one of their games. And sticking with tradition, I picked the game in the last round, which faced Eowyn PHCC with three wins against undefeated Daniel PHCC. Also, because we've seen Red Honest Orc in one of the previous videos, we wanted to get a new kid in here, and I don't think we've seen Daniel PHCC before. So we have, with the white pieces, Daniel PHCC against Eowyn PHCC with the black pieces, uh, uh, their uh, chess kid ratings uh, before the game was 1387 for Daniel PHCC and 1482 for Aon PHCC. These two kids have actually played each other quite a bit and Aon PHCC definitely holds the edge in head-to-head -head games. But let's see how this game turns out. Uh, actually, you probably already figured it out because I said who went undefeated and won all four games. But... Let's still try to pretend like we didn't know and keep it exciting, all right? So, here we go. Uh, they start out very commonly with E4. Uh, both of these players are E4 players. So we get E4 from Daniel PHCC, E5, uh, followed by Knight F3 and Knight C6. Uh, the common moves here are either Bishop C4 or Bishop B5. And if I know Daniel PHCC, D Bishop C4 is the common move, prefers to play the Italian game. Okay, uh, AOM PHCC responds with Bishop C5. Um, the, I know that Daniel PHCC does like to play uh, with the fried liver, but uh, also knows that that doesn't go too well against A1 PHCC. They played each other enough to know better. Uh, so instead, Daniel castles, and we have D6 from A1 PHCC. All of these are pretty standard opening moves. Uh, then we have uh, H3 from Daniel PHCC, trying to prevent uh, any unwelcome pins on the knight. Uh, Daniel PHCC just put the bishop over on C4 and doesn't want to have to bring it back. Uh, after that, we get some development from Aon PHCC with NF6. We have the other knight developed, uh, and we get castled. And so everything is completely symmetrical at this point. We've got every piece mirrored, um, except for this pawn over here on H3. We have not seen the equivalent push from Aon PHCC. Um, and so let's see how she moves forward with tempo and she picks to push the pawn on the other side. Uh, so with that extra move just goes ahead and prevents, uh, maybe sets up, uh, maybe setting up b5 maybe to try to uh, see if you could trap that bishop. Um, but anyways we got a6 in and then knight d5. I see the knights get uh, tr uh, traded off there. Um, and then knight to e7 played by a1 phcc. Honestly, um, that's not a bad move. That, that's that's uh, that's pretty good because it would be better if uh, you know you could leave it there and, and see the the bishop trade itself off because right now the bishop has got this pin on the f pawn is pointed at the king. And that's the whole point of playing the bishop to c4 in the first place is to put a pin on that f pawn. Uh, by moving the knight over to e6, it kind of forces the issue. It says either scoot back or I'm going to uh, take that bishop off the board. Um, and uh, Daniel PHCC actually plays a major blunder here with knight h4 totally misses that if AOM PHCC captures the bishop, the knight is hanging. 
Okay, so one of the things you always want to watch out for in your games is loose pieces. Loose pieces are pieces that have the same number of attackers as defenders. Sometimes that means zero. Zero attackers with zero defenders. The problem with loose pieces is they, be, they come under attack. And when they come under attack, you have to spend all your time defending them. This knight was doing a fine job over on F3. Not only that, it was doubly defended. It wasn't under attack, but it had defenders. Over on H4, it's completely undefended. Sure, you may be thinking, yeah, I'm going to come over here to the F5 square, but, you know, with a push like G6, what are you going to do with it there? But even worse is the fact that you could actually have the knight come under fire with one of your pieces falling at the same time. So we do see knight takes d5 next. The pawn recaptures. Uh, I don't know if AON PHCC just missed the hanging knight or what, but uh, the play was c6, um, which gives Daniel PHCC time to retreat the knight. Okay, so we saw the knight hop over to h4 and then hop right back to f3. That's not what you want to be doing with your pieces going back and forth. Uh, he got lucky to get out of there only losing a pawn after she captures with c takes d5. Um, so we have uh, a3 played, perhaps considering uh, b4 to try to drive off that bishop because AM PHCC's bishop is doing the same thing as Daniel PHCC's bishop was doing earlier, and that's pinning the king, or pinning the f pawn to the king. So we have a3, uh, we get e4, which is, you know, that's, that's decent. It's a, it's a way to get, you've got doubled pawns, see, see what you can do about that. Um, and so by pushing e4, it attacks the knight. Uh, we have the pawns traded, and now the knight has to go somewhere. Now knight e1 was probably the place you don't want to stick your knight, all right? So let's take a look. At e1, where is the knight ever going to go? There's a pawn sitting on c2, there's a pawn sitting on g2, and the pawn on e4 is attacking your other two squares. This knight is completely trapped, at least for another turn. It, it has no immediate prospects. So knight e1 is probably the worst place for the knight. Um, one good place would be to sit it here on d4. Why is d4 a good spot for the knight? See if you can figure it out before I tell you. Okay, d4 is a good place for the knight because black will never have any pawns that can attack the knight on that square. The only way black can get rid of the knight on that square is by trading it off with one of the bishops, which would be great for white. Daniel PHCC would love that. Uh, trading the knight for the bishop would be awesome. Not only that, it breaks up this pin that the bishop has on the f-pawn. Um, another option would be to perhaps route the knight to g5 in hopes to capture on e4, uh, but that probably wouldn't work. Um, there are a few moves black might have, including scooting the rook over, pushing the pawn down, bringing the bishop over. There, there's just too many ways black can defend this pawn. So really, the best move by far is knight to d4. Uh, but instead, we have knight e1 trapping the knight, giving him no squares whatsoever. Um, and at this point, I think AOM PHCC just... Uh-oh. I lost the game. Give me just a second as it refreshes. Let's get back to where we were. I don't know what caused it to refresh, but we'll we'll roll with it. All right, here we go. Um, so now it's trying to do analysis. I don't want that. Okay. Okay. So we have. Uh, A5 played. Like I said, I think AOM PHCC was just not sure what to do. Now take a look, let's think about this. White has an undeveloped bishop, a knight that can't move, 
a rook that's trapped. Look at all the pieces of white on the back row. They're not in correct order, but they're still on the back row. If you want to take advantage of a player that has all their pieces on the back row, the best thing you can do is develop. All right, this push to a5 does not really accomplish anything. There were several other options. Uh, bishop getting played to e6 would look really good because if you get the bishop to c4, you win the rook. Um, another thing would be uh, if you can't get that bishop to c4, you might be able to push the pawn to d5 and have it kind of solidified. And then you can, you're free to move your queen out, maybe to f6. So there's lots of things black can do here to develop their pieces. And that's what's necessary. If you want to take advantage of your opponent not being developed, develop your own pieces. Uh, instead, we have a5, uh, followed by c3 and b5. So AOM PHCC is going for pawn play uh, on the queen side. Um, it's okay, it's just, it's not the way to really take advantage of the lack of development by white at this point. All right, so we uh, then have b4 uh, accepting the trade, uh, and then we have bishop to b6, uh, knight to c2, <coughs> excuse me, bishop to b7. Okay, now we've got We've got some threats. We've got two bishops pointing down the diagonals. Now we're, we're looking all right. Um, bishop e6 still might have been a little bit more active, but this is definitely strong, putting the bishop on the long diagonal. Uh, knight d4, finally reaching that square. Remember the knight was over here on f3 several moves ago? Went to e1, to c2, and now is back at e d4 should have just jumped to d4 right off the bat, okay? So it made its way there. It just gave black several turns of uh, development opportunities. And then we have the, the bishop uh, trade off with the knight. Um, centralizing the rook, getting ready to just, we've got this passer on the d file. Um, so getting things just rolling down that way uh, would be the best thing to do. So at this point, Daniel PHCC plays bishop to b2, setting up a checkmate threat on the g7 pawn, uh, but it is defended with the pawn pushed f6. No sneaky checkmates right here, right? Uh, if there's one thing I've noticed about Daniel PHCC, he gets more checkmates on the g7 and g2 pawns than anybody I've ever seen. He is when you castle and he just attacks that castle it is it is exactly what you're supposed to do just throw pieces at the king and get those checkmates and that's one of the reasons why he does so well in his games is he doesn't he's so laser focused on getting to that king he just he breaks through a lot of the times so uh AOM PHCC calmly plays f6 to block the uh, checkmate threat uh, and then this is a weird move right here, f3. Uh, this is really weakening. Okay, right now, white's king is, is pretty safe, um, especially with the g and h pawn connected. If the e pawn ever gets pushed, then white can capture and it's got protection, but at least the g and h pawn stay connected. By pushing f3, there is no way you can keep from ending up with isolated pawns, which completely destroys the protection around the king. It creates multiple targets, because obviously black's going to capture uh, on f3, and you have to recapture, and if you're gonna recapture, um, you know, g takes f3 is, is um, Good. The other op, you, you can't take with the rook because the bishop's pointing at it, right? So you have to play g takes f3, and now you've got isolated pawns and an exposed king, right? This is, this is no good. This is not what you want. Um, so that f3 move really hurt Daniel PHCC and probably was the 
was the chink in the armor that was necessary for AOMPHCC to find her way to victory. Okay, so we have Queen D7 getting ready to attack, uh, putting attacker on the H3 pawn, uh, and Daniel PHCC plays King H2. Not the best idea because that is going, that should allow Rook E2 with tempo, right? Because you check, the king is, if the king's going to keep guarding the H2 pawn, he has to step up to H3, then you get the rooks doubled, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, a better move might have been just to play queen h4. Uh, see if you can't get the queen trade and get your pawns connected again. Um, instead, we have king h2 uh, and a1 phcc plays rook ac8, uh, get, claiming the other open file. So now having both file rooks on the open file, rook e2 was probably uh, a bit better by getting the tempo. Uh, with check. Queen g1, however, is a major blunder. Now you can go ahead and double up rooks on the second file. You could play rook c2 and rook e2 sequentially and just take, just completely take over really fast. We do get rook c2 and the rook f2. Uh, but AOM PHCC misses throwing in rook e2 as well and instead just captures. Uh, kind of loses a bit of the advantage that, uh, that she had. It still definitely has a big advantage. Uh, plays queen e6, um, which is okay, but I, I'm not a big fan of having the queen in front of the rook when you're trying to set up a battery. But... Daniel PHC did not learn his lesson to put the queen right back on g1. I don't know if he's uh, thinking keep an eye on that g7 pawn or what, but he just got in trouble for putting his queen on g1 and puts the queen on g1 again. a1 does not miss the opportunity, throws the queen down to e2, now completely forking the king and the bishop. Uh, the bishop has been basically hanging there ever since the queen left the d4 square. Um, uh, Daniel PHCC plays king h1, uh, blundering into a mate in two, and a1 does not miss it. Um, see if you can find the mate in two. Pause real quick. All right, did you find it? It should be pretty simple if... You've been doing any sorts of puzzles. We got bishop takes f3. There's only one legal move. That is to block with the queen on g2. And queen takes g2, checkmate. Eowyn goes undefeated and wins the PHCC April quick three. Daniel BHCC claims second in a complete tie with Red Honest Orc. And uh, both games between a AOM PHCC and the second place players were good games. The game with Red on the Sork was also a good game with some interesting tactics and missed opportunities. Uh, but uh, so keep practicing, keep watching for those loose pieces. That was kind of the issue in this game. We saw the knight on h4 was loose for a little bit, we saw the bishop on b2 was loose for a little bit, um, and we saw. Uh, Daniel PHCC trap as knight. Uh, take advantage of those uh, your opponent's weaknesses by making sure you're more developed. So there are, there are several different themes in this game that you can learn from. Uh, loose pieces, development, um, not trapping your own pieces. Those are all good lessons to learn. Keep analyzing your games. Go over them. Look at what you did. Look at how you could do it better. Use the engine, uh, the analysis engine on chesskid.com. See what it says about your games. All right, so we will have another one of these videos probably in about a week after our next tournament. Until then, keep playing chess and having fun.